Good everyone, welcome to this video, and today we have the Russian Starter Pack review. Of course, as per usual, starting out with the plane, and then moving on to the tank later. And of course, as usual, anything that is already reviewed, obviously I think Zukovsky's should be out by the time I put this video out. Um, both of these are done, so if you want to go look at more in-depth videos on these vehicles, do go take a look at the description and you will find the reviews of both of these vehicles. So starting us out with number well, vehicle number one, we have Zukovsky's I-153 M62 Chaika. Do I really need to say anything about this? This thing is very popular with steel clubbers and there's a good reason for that. It combines insane biplane turn rates with great speed great firepower, decent secondary weapons options, and just overall a lot of fun. This thing is a barrel of laughs. Now, of course, the Chaika itself has been power creeped a little bit, but it still competes rather adequately. There is definitely planes that will kick its teeth in without even trying, but of course there is still planes that this thing can absolutely smack around when it wants to. Now, for premium bonuses, this thing isn't actually that amazing because obviously it's rank 1, not rank 2. But that we can live with because of how good it is. And to back up the tank that we get in this pack, it's even better. Of course, this pack also comes with 7 days of premium and 120,000 SL, as with all other packs. But if I was to personally say, I would personally say Russia is definitely the strongest pack out there. Other than France, but France has its own flaws. Russia doesn't really have that many, to be brutally honest. Now, of course, Zukovsky's Chaika as a cast aircraft is very good. The problem is it's very fragile. And considering you're playing at 2.7, well, I would assume you're playing at 2.7 if you are using the tank, you will meet a lot of AA which can easily one-shot you. So that's what you've got to be careful of. The biplane itself comes with a wide range of weaponry options. Obviously, the bomb I use the bombs personally because the rockets for me just don't work. Or they do so little damage they don't seem to affect the target. But if I just go quickly over, obviously, if you want to see more in depth, um, it's in the review. So check the description below. But of course, you get four 50 kilogram bombs. These drop as a pair. You get eight RBS-1, well, and there's a 132 then. I wish there were. 82 rockets. These are okay, but they feel a bit nerfed. They're not as strong as they used to be. And then for air threats, you have RS-82. However, I don't personally advise carrying these. These are, well, these specific rockets. If you, if you had the RS-132s, I wouldn't be saying that, but these are RS-82. You get very little explosive charge. You get very little penetration. These are for aircraft only. If you need to take out tanks, Use the RBS or use the bombs. I personally use the bombs myself. Of course, it is still a great plane, but it does have a problem with its overheating, which isn't as severe as what the Italian start pack has for a plane, but it's still noteworthy. But it's easily managed with just a little bit of throttle control. As long as you're not weapon the balls off this thing too much, you'll be fine. Now, of course, as time goes on and you're using your machine guns, they'll start to slowly run out of ammunition. The last gun to run out is right here. And that will be when you're down to around 20 rounds. So you're not really going to notice it, but having just one 7.62 firing for like half a second, you'll notice how little damage it actually does, unless you're up close and personal. But this biplane right here is easily one of the top dogs when it comes to the starter pack premiums. Of course, it is still rank 1 compared to some of the others which have rank 2, but it's a worthy trade-off. I'll tell you that right now. Moving on to the tank, we have the T-126. Now, this is where the Russian starter pack does kind of lose a little bit of edge, and I'm not saying that because the tank is bad. Far from it. This tank is insane. The problem is, is that with a new player, they're not necessarily going to know about shell types. And that's the thing. Shell types do take time to learn, and some people aren't necessarily going to use the upgraded rounds that come with the T126. Stock, the T126 comes with the BR240 APHE BC round. 
very solid round. I do like it myself. The problem is 17mm of, penet of penetration at 2.7, especially when you get up to 3.7, does start to lose its touch. Now, some players may think this will solve the problem. But as you can tell, not by a lot. Only gains about 3. But then we come to this shell, the BR240P. This is the selling point. If you're up close and personal and you can't pen with your standard round, make sure to carry plenty of these. Obviously, don't fill your tank up with these and don't main this as your main round. You'll, you'll regret it. But this APCR round has saved my ass more than once and it's a very solid round to carry. I recommend personally carrying around 20 to 30 of these and then around 20 to 30 of the BR240s. But these will get you out of a sticky situation most of the time. Of course, this will also be down to you learning about enemy tanks, but don't worry, the tank comes faded anyway, so you get your artillery. You can even scout if you want. There's a wide range of things you can do with this tank. It's also very forgiving, with its armor being extremely thick, very well sloped, the turret being quite trollish, and just overall the mobility, whilst not being amazing for a light tank, it still gets you where you need to go, and it is definitely one of the strong suits of this tank. Of course, the rear armor is not amazing, so if you are flanked by German HVAP or even from the side, it can still punch through, and they can also punch through the front of your turret. But personally, that's a worthy trade-off, because this thing has a great rate of fire. Obviously, it's not on my best crew, so it doesn't have the best rate of fire right now. But for a Russian tank, it gets decent gun depression, great gun elevation, but you also trade off for turret rotation speed. This will require you to turn the entire vehicle towards a threat, most likely. That is something you'll have to learn as well, but the T126 is very forgiven for that. The frontal armor can stop most things at its BR. Obviously, when you start getting up tiered, that won't be happening as much, but if you angle it just a little bit, it will start to bounce even some 3.7 guns, and you'll have a lot of fun. Of course, this pack comes, well I believe it's 9.99 this pack is, or it's 6.99, one or two. And personally, I would gladly pay the money to get this pack. Obviously, I had the T126 from a few years ago, um, and Zukovsky's Chaika is the same case. I've had these vehicles for years. So these I haven't gotten through the starter pack, but of course, you will when you purchase this pack unless you're like harry who has every single tank premium it seems but you get my point and for a starting premium pack this is easily top dog closely followed by france but if you need a starter pack you want to learn how to play war thunder here's your pack i mean you get one of the best biplanes for its tier you get one of the best light tanks for its tier and what else can I say? This pack is actually incredible with what it does to a new player. But anyway, that's it for today's review. I personally think you should buy this pack immediately if you do not have it. Obviously, if you have any of the vehicles in the pack, don't bother. Just get the vehicle separate that you haven't got from this pack. But my god, if you're a new player, this is the pack for you. I can promise you that. Next up will be Great Britain, which is good but has its flaws. Anyway, I'm going to let you guys off. I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Russian starter pack, and I will see you all on the next one.